CSIS 2440 is filmed before a live studio audience. Today we're going to be diving into object-oriented programming. And I believe all of you have been exposed to it, right? You've taken Java. So what the heck is it? Why do we care about it? Why do we do it? And you don't want my opinion on the subject, frankly, <laughs> because I'm not a fan. Yeah. Well, the big, the big movement or whatever for object-oriented programming was you can, it's a programming paradigm where you can model real world objects, real world things, right? Normally, before object oriented, it was all procedural. You just did line one, line two, line three, line four, and maybe line five would say, hey, go to line seven, and then come back or whatever. But you just ran right down in a row. Object oriented programming is a way to model real world objects. And the basic idea is think of an object, think of like a bicycle, right? A bicycle has properties. It has a color. It has a style. And they, you know, even bicycles even have a gender, believe it or not. There's male bicycles and female bicycles, the way the frames are shaped, right? There's maybe number of gears. Those are all properties of the bicycle. Humans, we have properties, right? Height, weight, skin color, hair color, eye color, all kinds of things, right? Gender and so forth. Well, we also have what are called methods or things we can do. So a, a bike can move, it can shift gears, it can park, right? A human, we have functions or methods, and the same thing, functions and methods that we can do. We can eat, we can sleep, we can drink, right? We can talk, we can move, we can walk, we can sit down, stand up. Those are all actions. So in the programming world, you create this one big blob of a thing called an object, and we would call it the human object, and it has properties eye color and so forth. Well, what's the property? It's just a variable that holds the color of your eyes, just a variable that holds your hair color, just a variable that holds your height, your weight, and so forth. And what's a method? It's just a function that does the work. So if you want to walk, you call the walk function. If you want to run, you call the run function, right? It's, that's all it is, but it's all encapsulated into one complete object. And so when we talk about object-oriented, you can't get away from the idea of an object and a class, right? A class is the foundation. So hence our picture on the screen here. This is a cookie cutter. And a class is a cookie cutter. It's a template, right? You use it to stamp out a cookie, right? We take this cookie cutter and we shape it. And so right now we have a gingerbread man cookie. And so this class might be called gingerbread man or something like that. But then you can take that and you can stamp out a cookie or in other words, we call it creating an object of a cookie or an instance of it, or you might hear the term instantiation. So when we instantiate a cookie, we might get one that looks like this, right? So the shape is based on the cookie cutter itself, but then look at this one has a little bow and it has little frilly feet, you know, lace around the hands and feet and three little polka dots for buttons. But I could have made one that looks like this. It's got a bow tie and a different looking smiley face, right? But they're all from the same class. They're from the same cookie cutter, right? Just stamp them out, okay? Maybe I made one that looks like this. <laughs> this one uh, maybe was made without the use of a cookie cutter. It's a little bit off there, I think. <laughs> but you get the idea. Assuming we use the same cookie cutter, and that, that's theoretically from the same one, but it looks a little different. Different colored cookie dough, right? Different decorations. This one's similar to the one we looked at before, but the bow tie is a little bit different, okay? So there's lots of different ways we could decorate our cookie, but it all came from the same class. Does that make sense? When we create the object, that's when we make them all different. So how does that all work in PHP? Let's take a simple little approach here. We're going to make a class of dogs. So we'll say class dog. And there, we now have a cookie cutter that can stamp out dogs, okay? And then in a minute, we're going to make a bunch of dogs, and we will 
change them and shape them and color them and, and mold them the way we want, but they're all going to come from this template here called dog. Because remember, that cookie cutter, that gingerbread man cookie cutter, somebody had to make that too, right? So there's a factory that makes those. Well, we're the human factory that's going to make the dog cookie cutters. Okay, so what are some properties that dogs have? Fur color? Legs, number of legs. So uh, before we put this variable here, that's funny. It took me a second for my brain to catch up with you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, one thing that we have to add, if you're familiar with Java, you already know this term, but there's keywords that we add to our variables, to our properties, right? And they have the same ones that Java does, private, protected, public. We're going to only talk about public and private. We're going to leave the other ones for um, probably never, okay? But public, we'll talk about what it means in a few minutes, and we're going to be changing this in a few minutes. But for now, this means that anybody or anything or any code that is not inside of this class has access to that fur color variable and everything inside of the class as well, right? So in other words, if I wrote some PHP down here, I have, I'm allowed to access that variable inside of the class, okay? All right, but we'll get to that in a minute. Let's add our uh, <laughs> number of legs num legs okay what else i had one class where they said uh, a boolean variable uh is a good boy <laughs> is a good boy true or false well well exactly in fact we should set it as a default oh come on who's a good boy who's a good boy huh who's a good boy me oh you, you, you who's a good boy i am i'm a good boy but no 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 look, look I, I i got i got stuff to do today all right okay what else how about wait Maybe the name, height. Now there are things too that dogs can do, like they can bark and talk and all this kind of things, right? They, they're barking as they're talking, right? We'll deal with those in a minute. Those are gonna be the functions. But you see what we're doing here. We're creating a list of variables that are the values that represent a dog. So again, this these fields here, it's just variables. They're just regular old PHP variables and they are known as fields or attributes or properties of the class, which is the dog. So any dog, we're creating an object, and you can literally model any object on the planet. You can model chairs, tables, houses, people, vehicles. Whatever you can think of, you can model it with this sort of framework, this way of thinking. So we have a class called dog, and then this dog, and all dogs in general, this is not a specific dog, this is just the cookie cutter. Dogs in general have a fur color. They have a number of legs. They have a, a status of is a good doggy. They have a weight, a name, a height. They have other things that we're going to leave off for now. But now we have a basic little dog cookie cutter, just like our little gingerbread man, right? It has some properties. It has a height, a width. It has a, a shape of you know, legs and arms and things like that. There's a, those are properties. Okay, so down here, I can create a dog. Now we already know how to make a variable, right? Just dollar sign x equals 10 or whatever. And that variable could be a number, it could be a string, it could be an array with, you know, 10 and 102 and whatever inside of it, right? It can also be an object. So we can say new dog. And now we have a dog. Okay? Now let's give it a better name here. What's a dog name? Anybody have a dog? Spirit? Nice. Spirit. Okay. Spirit is a new dog. Your dog's going to be famous on this video. All right. So I can say spirit, and then I can access his fur color, right? How do I access the fur color? In Java, we would say dot fur color, right? There's a problem with that though. Why can't we say dot? The dot is the concatenation operator. So in PHP, we have for the equivalent of the Java dot, we have the dart, which looks like a dart, okay? 
So what this will be now, if I say, now I'm doing some of this, I won't say wrong, but bad practice on purpose, right? Baby steps. We'll get to the better way to do it. And if you've been exposed to object-oriented programming, you already see the error of my ways right now, okay? I promise we'll get to better, cleaner code, but I want to just do some baby steps here. So we want spirit, that's our dog, and we just created it on line 20, and we want to talk about what is spirit's age, which we don't even have an age variable. Let's add that. Spirit's age is how old? Four. Okay. So we, we need to change one little thing. My syntax is wrong on purpose for just a moment. But the idea is this. Here's this object, this dog. We've It's an instance. We stamped out a cookie, right? We took our template up above right here, our cookie cutter, and we stamped out a little thing called spirit. Okay. And we want to access the spirits, this dog, this specific instance of a dog's age. Okay. And the way you do that is like so. Spirit dart age. Notice I'm removing the dollar sign from the age variable. Okay. That's just the syntax. Who knows why, but that's how they do it. Okay. So spirit though is the actual object name. So back to our cookie cutters a minute ago, each one of those ones we stamped out, maybe the first cookie, we named it Fred, right? We name our cookies, who knows why? But now if I have five cookies on the table, I can say, hey, look at Fred, it has a green bow tie in. Look at Wilma, she has a little red bow in her hair, right? This is the same thing. Look at spirit, he, he's four, okay? I'm assuming, let's go uh, public sex, is spirit male or female? Male? Okay. Spirit is sex is male. Okay. And we can keep doing all these things. Let's just add a couple more. We'll say spirit, dart, height. Do you know weight? No. I... <laughs> Chunky? <laughs> so we'll go like 25 pounds. I don't know. I had one class that we did. The dog was a Great Dane and it was 120 pounds. I could, I mean, that's insane. I can't imagine a dog that huge. It is a horse. Yeah. Okay. And we'll do one more. We'll do this color of the dog's fur. So spirits. All right. What is spirits fur color? Did we do fur color? We did. White? That is the most plain name for a color that we've had in all the times I've done a dog in class. I've had fawn as a color. I've never heard of this color. I've had brindle as a color. What the heck is brindle? I'm like, what is with the weird dog colors? So white, that's all. In fact, we're gonna do the Bob Ross spelling. It's white. White. We, what we've done, let's just make sure that we're absolutely clear because not everybody who's going to see this video has been exposed to this kind of stuff before. So we went to some manufacturer and said, hey, can you make me a dog cookie cutter, right? This little metal dog cookie cutter like we saw on the gingerbread man, right? So we created a cookie cutter. This is just, you could think of it as a set of rules. It's a template. It's the format of how to create a dog, okay? And so... If, and if I'm not trying to get all like religious or anything like that on you, but one way to think about this is as this is like the blueprints that God follows when he creates dogs, right? Okay. And so he looks at this template and he goes, oh, okay, dog's got to have a fur color. So I'll make sure I give it a fur color and oh, it has a name. So I'll make sure I give it a, a name right here and so forth, right? And so on line 22, this is the actual moment of creation, right? Line 22 is when it's created. Lines 2 through 12, it's the book with the blueprints in it, the templates. Think of it another way is the architect that's building the house, right? This is the blueprint that the architect made in the, in the building with the table and the drafting table, and they're drawing out all the blueprints. Then down here, the construction worker is on site and builds the dog, okay? So that's, what's line 20, that's what line 22 is. Then once it's built, we can assign it an age, we can assign it a gender or, or a sex, we can assign it a weight, and so on and so forth, okay? Now I want to print the dog out, right? Display it on the screen. So we can just say echo, something like, we'll say spirit, uh, dart, I almost said dot, 
dot name is spirit age years old and is spirits sex and weighs spirits weight pounds and has a fur color of spirit fur color. Okay, take a look at this now. If we left out this idea of objects here, and we just had something like, you know, age equals four and sex equals male without the spirit dart business, right? We've done that a million times, right? And the variable we would just put would just be name right there, and we would just put age right there and so forth. Well, we've just added a little extra component here, and we're saying, I want the age of this specific instance of this object. Spirit is a specific instance of one of these things, whatever those things are called. Okay, this will print out just fine, so let's go ahead and run it. Make sure that I'm not full of it, because you never know with me. And this is OOP right here, and there we go. Oh, now, ooh, notice that. Yeah, I didn't set the name property right, good catch. So, spirit name is equal to spirit. That's sort of redundant, but that's okay. There we go. Spirit is four years old and is male and weighs 25 pounds and has a fur color of white. Okay. I have also created some CSS that will highlight our variables here. So I'm going to go ahead and put these span tags in. All right, so now that we got a paragraph tag wrapped around it and some span tags, our CSS should magically kick in. I know it's hideous, but my focus there is I just want to highlight the variables there. That's what the, the white border is around the words. So we can see each of the variables, right? This is our name variable, our age variable, and so forth, okay? All right, let's just pause here and breathe for a minute. How does this feel? Does it make sense? Do we understand the basic idea here, okay? So here's our cookie cutter. It's got some stuff in it that we can manipulate. And then poof, down here, we're creating a cookie and we're manipulating some of its properties. All right, now, what if I want to make another dog? Yeah, I have to kind of do this whole thing again, right? So let's, let's do a halfway version of that, okay? I'm gonna make a new dog here. And then of course, we'd have to give it a new name, right? So anybody else have a dog they want to volunteer? Roy? A-O-I, like that? Yeah. Wow, cool name. And age? Six. six. Gender or sex? Say again? Female. Female. I should have got that by you saying I think she's six. <laughs> Weight? Uh, probably 25 pounds. Fur color? Give me a crazy color. Um, marble. Marble, nice. <laughs> and name is... And then if I just change all of the spirits down here. Now, by the way, if you this is the worst time in the world to be following along coding if you if you coded along with me because I'm going to change everything because everything I did is wrong here. Wrong! This is a bad way to do it. But it's a good way to wrap your head around the concept, okay? But now I've just duplicated my work, but we got it working and now I should get two dogs and it's displaying them and their different properties, right? Okay, there are lots of issues here and there's lots of problems with this, but I just wanna make sure this idea of creating a template called a class and then instantiating it, that's what this is called. We instantiated a dog class object, right? That's what that's called. And think about that word instantiated, create an instance of. Right, we made an instance of a dog. That's all that means. Okay, and we did the exact same thing down here. But there's some problems, lots of problems. Thing number one, what if for the age, they tried to put that the age, or let's go back to the joke you made earlier for weight. And you said, uh, was it chunky? Is that what you said? So if I try that, that'll actually work right now, right? And weighs chunky pounds, right? 
But that's no good. We want to change that to where it can only be a number, right? Well, how can we even do that? If you're familiar with Java, it's going to be the same answer that you would think of if this were a Java class. Yeah, setters and getters, right? So if you're not familiar with that idea of what a, what a setter is or a getter, what the idea here is this. Inside of our dog class, we're going to create a function that handles setting the property for us. So rather than directly accessing age, we're going to call a function that's going to do it for us. So let's start there. So let's go up to our class, and we're going to create a public function, and it's going to be called set age. Okay? And inside of here, we're going to take in a parameter, so we'll just take in a variable called a. And the basic idea is we want to set age equal to a, right? So this is wrong syntax, but this is the idea. Okay, that's basically what we want to do, right? And then what we want to also do in line 15 is put some rules in there, some if statements that will prevent them from entering bad data. Okay, we'll get to that part in a minute, but that's the basic concept here. So thing number one, in order to do this, we're going to change this variable age to be private. Okay? We're going to make that private, and I'm going to comment this out for just a minute. And now because this is private, what that means is if you do not live in this class, you cannot access that variable. So now, right down here, when I try to assign it, I'm going to get an error. It's going to give me a fatal error. Uncaught cannot access private property, right? Because age is now private, meaning the only thing that can access it is code within that and that curly brace. If you're not in those two curly braces, you are not allowed, all right? That's okay. We're going to make our function here public. And so down here, what we're going to do, instead of saying spirit age, we're going to say set age and we're going to pass in the parameter of four. So we're going to call spirits function, spirits method, if you're familiar with the Java terminology. And I think even in PHP, they call it a method when you're talking about objects, even though we label it a function right here, right? But it's the same thing. So line 29 here says, hey, grab this spirit object, this specific instance of a dog, call it set age function right here, pass in the value four, hand it off to that variable right there called A. The reason I can access line 13 is because that is a public function. Public means if I'm outside of the curly braces, I can still get to it. Okay? So con conceptually, we good with that idea? Okay, now the idea is I need to take this 4 that was passed in and give it off to this variable, which is the actual property of the dog class. And the way we do that is a little bit different than in Java. Okay, if you're familiar with it. In Java, typically you'll see something that looks like this, all right? And if you don't know Java, just bear with me for a minute. This dot age equals age, and they'll have right here age, right? Of course, it would actually say int age, but we'll ignore that, okay? So here's what the this operator means, and it's the same in both languages, all right? Right now, I've got a variable called age, and I have another variable called age, right, which is this one here. And again, if this were Java, that dollar sign wouldn't be there. So just ignore the dollar sign business for a minute. But the idea is this. I have one variable called age, and I have a second variable called age. And we want to distinguish the two. Because if you recall, in all languages, variables have scope, right? And in this case, this age variable here lives and dies within these two curly braces. Okay, this age up here, which is the same as this one, it lives in the entire class. It can be accessed from anywhere. But I can't just simply say age equals age because the computer gets confused, right? And again, we have to pretend this dollar sign is not there for a minute. The computer gets confused. We're like, well, which age is this? Which age is that? Which one are you talking about? So that's where this keyword called this comes in. In Java and PHP, we use it a little differently, but we say this, meaning this specific object. 
this instance of the dog class. So in other words, whoever is calling the set age function, well, right now it's spirit calling it. So we're talking about, you might, you could just put the word spirit there, dot age, except spirit is too specific. We need to be generic. And that's sort of a placeholder for whichever object is calling this function. And a shorthand way of thinking about it, when we throw the this keyword in there, we mean this one. That's all. This means this. This age is referring to this age. Now, the way I get around this in Java is, let's go back to the actual typable code here. In Java, I would do something like this. A, and I would just say age equals A. Because then it's very clear, right? This age is talking about this one. And this A is clearly that one. That way it's clear and you don't need the this keyword. Okay? And if you're from the Java world, you know in that scenario you wouldn't have to use this. However, I said all of that to say this. In PHP, you have to use this no matter what. No matter what. So even in this scenario here, so let's go back to the real syntax of PHP. Even in this scenario, if I want to get a hold of that variable in line 10, I have to use the this operator. Okay? So what this what the word this means is in this instance right here in line 29, when spirit is saying, hey, set the age to four, you can sort of think of it as behind the scenes, this is being replaced with spirit, as in changed spirit's age. And then in a minute when, how do you pronounce the name again? Ahoy. Ahoy? Yeah. Like almost like ahoy, kind of? Yeah. Okay. Right. Oh, got it. Okay. So in a minute when ahoy, when ahoy tries to do it, it's, it's like putting that there. Now, we can't just put ahoy or spirit there because this is the generic template class up here. And this will mean nothing if somebody doesn't create an object with that name. That's why we go with this. It's a placeholder for the actual object's name. So that's a long-winded way to explain what this does. But the simple concept is now Spirit can call the age function of a dog class and specifically set its own specific instance of age to whatever number was passed in right there. We'll do the same thing down here. We'll just copy and paste that and we'll change it to right here put a six in there and now both of them are calling the function properly it's a much better way to do it all right the only other thing now is we cannot do spirit age like that because that's a private variable so we have to create a function that can return that value instead so those are called getters. This thing is called a setter, right? By the way, you don't have to call it set age. Call it chicken ducks, right? It doesn't matter what you call it, okay? It just makes sense to call it setters, okay? Okay, then we can also do a public function that's called get age. And again, you can call this whatever you want. And all it's going to do is return this age. Oops, age. That's it. So now if I call this get age function, it just returns whatever the value is for the specific dog that's calling it. Can you dig, man? All right, so take a look here on, take a look on line 38 here. We can no longer do this, so we need to call the get age function right here, right? Get age. And that will return the age of that particular dog. There's one little minor issue that we're going to have to fix, though. But this is conceptually what we need to do. The problem now that's occurring is you cannot put a function like this inside of double quotes. Normally, you can just drop your variables inside of double quotes with no problem, right? Like we've been doing here. But you can't do that with a function. So we can either concatenate it or fun little thing that's new for you is called template not notation, where you put the whole thing in curly braces. And that will allow you to continue just keeping it right there in your double quotes. Okay? So we'll do the same thing down here. We'll just change it to the proper dog, though. By the way, could I have left that with spirit? Sure. It would just display spirit's age for the wrong dog, but yeah, it would work. So now, 
everything I just changed should make it work exactly the way it did, but now it's a little bit better code. So let's refresh it and make sure all of our errors go away. And there, it's working just fine, but we still have the problem that I can enter in a string for a weight or an age or whatever, right? So let's fix that, okay? So I don't want to be able to allow a uh, string right there. And right now, it will allow it. So here in our dog, in our set age, we can just do a little thing here to see what kind of data they entered, right? There's a function for that. It's called get type, okay? So we're going to say if get type A is equal to integer would be the return value we're looking for, then we can go ahead and do this code here, all right? So the return value of this will be a string, it'll be a word. It'll return if it's a double or an integer or whatever, or if it's an object or whatever. So now, if I go down here to the dog and I say set age to Beavis, Bevy, Bevi, that's the plural, right? If I set age to Bevi and I refresh it, I'm going to get an error, or I'm going to get nothing there because we didn't do an else. So we're going to say else must, or sorry, echo enter a number. Something silly. We'll fix that, make it better in a minute. But now you'll see that we get this error here, right? And in fact, if we want to be really hilarious, we can die right afterwards, and it'll just stop the rest of the code from running, okay? Which is what we want to do, but we want to clean that error trapping up to make it way better than it is. We'll do that later, but this is a good start, okay? So this is good. This will prevent a string from coming in. But there's still another problem with this code right here. What, what else could we do on here that's valid but not the kind of input we want? It'll take in any integer. Yeah, we don't want a negative number, right? So in like negative one, it'll allow negative one. Okay. Yeah, so we want to, we can, we don't have to put a cap on the end of it, right? They could be a thousand year old dog if we want them to. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah, this dog is, is ancient. But we can just add a little thing here that says, and A is greater than zero, right? So we can say, enter a number greater than zero. And this will give us an error here. Or we fix it by putting in the real thing, like five. What was it? Four, right? So that's pretty good. But what's another possible thing that somebody might want to enter that we're currently not allowing? Yeah, we have the dog's two and a half, right? That's something the user might try to put in, right? So like 2.5. Well, at the moment, look at our error. Enter a number greater than zero. I'm like, I did. What are you talking about? I did. So we can do this. So that's one option. Yep, we can say get types, we're going to have to do some double parentheses here, get type A is equal to double. So look at what's happening here. This must be true and this must be true, right? This being true only requires that one of these are true, that one or that one. Make sense? So as long as one of these two are true, and whichever one that is doesn't matter, as long as one of them, and, and that one is true. So this should allow that number now, okay? I wanted to show you this method here, for this technique on line 16 first, even though there's a slightly simpler one that we're gonna use in just a second, but that get type can be useful in other contexts as well. And so I wanted to show you that, and, and specifically if we wanted to force only integers, right? This next trick we're about to do wouldn't work. So that's why I'm going to show that to you. But this will make your code a little cleaner. There's another function that's called is numeric, right? And it just checks to see if it's a number. And it has one little slight advantage over this one, this technique here. So instead of doing this, we can say is numeric a, and that will return true or false if it's a number. But So let's run it, make sure we didn't break anything. And I just refreshed and it didn't break. But what's nice about this 
arguably you might decide this is a bad idea, but I can actually now do this. And that will actually be allowed. Even though that's a string, but it's got a numeric value, right? So you may argue that that's better or worse, your call, right? But now this is pretty simple, right? We got this little, if it's numeric and it's greater than zero, then great. Otherwise, throw this error here, okay? We may or may not look at a better error trapping system today, but we will look at it. If not today, it'll be next time, okay? But I want to make sure we get this basic idea here that we have this little function here that now protects the data that's being input. You cannot directly manipulate that. You must go through this method to get it in there. Now, of course, you need to do that with all of your variables, right? So we have all this here as public. This is bad. These should all be private, and they should all have their own setters and getters, right? Okay, so the getters are easy, right? We just come down here, and we can just line duplicate, right? How many variables we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've already got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we can do, what is it, fur color and name. So getters, easy enough, feel okay about that? All right, setters. Let's go ahead and change all these to public, or to private, I should say, right? So we'll just do our little multi-line select, private. And we get the last one down here, private, okay? So now, this look at how big this is starting to get here. It's getting a little bit out of control, right? We can yank it out and put it in a separate file. And again, if you're from a Java world, you have to be in a separate file. Notice we do not. We haven't been, we don't have to be. Not only do you have to be in a separate file in Java, but the file name has to be dog.java, right? In our case, no. It could be whatever you want it to be, okay? All right, so let's quickly make these setters, and then we'll move on. Now, with the rest of the setters, I'm not going to bother making them secure where it prevents strings and all that business. We're not going to mess with all that, because as long as we got this one, we get the idea, right? But let's just quickly do these. While I was doing that, I noticed that I had the wrong variable name for num legs down below, right? So that's just num legs right there. And we can change that as well. Okay, so there we go. We have all these getters, which just return the variable. That's all. Easy enough. We have all these setters here, which I'm not putting any kind of error trapping. I'm not bothering making them all fancy and protective. In the real world, in real code, you definitely need to do that, right? Okay, but for now, you know, we're going we're gonna to build this thing out and make it even more impressive a little bit later, okay? But we've got all the setters now, and so now, what's that mean? We've got to come back to our code down here, and we have to change all this stuff we're doing down here now, right? We can't be doing what we're doing here, right? We need to say set the sex, right, to male by calling it as a function, right? We've got to do the same thing for all of these now. Okay, so now that we've got these properly calling the functions here, the obvious problem is now inside of here, we have to be calling these methods, right? So again, we gotta change all of these. So like we did up here, we called the getter. We gotta do the same thing for the name, same thing for the sex, and same thing for the fur color, okay? Okay, now that we've got all this stuff functioning the way you're supposed to work with objects, right? But I wanted to just make sure we look at it baby step at a time so we understand the basic concept of what's going on here. But now we are properly setting the age with the functions here, and we are properly calling the getters here inside of our code. And if I refresh it, hopefully we have no errors. And we got syntax error on line 13. Let's see what we did. Oh, it's something in my function or my class, actually. 
Oh, <laughs> yeah, what did I do? What did I miss? I see it. It's on line 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. I'm missing every one of them. Public what? Function. <laughs> All right? There we go. Okay. Oh, looks like that's missing. What's going on here? Oh, I kind of, my copy paste, I goofed a couple. I missed a few. Thought I, there we go. Okay. Now we got it. Okay. Okay, so now this is a much better way to interact with objects. I know it's getting messy. We're going to clean it up a little bit more in just a minute. But I want to make sure this big picture makes sense. So I'm going to go through it one last, one more time here. We created a template, a cookie cutter, a little metal wireframe that cuts out dogs. Right? That's all this code down to line 42. This dog has things that it describe it, right? A variable called fur color, number of legs, this is a good doggy weight, and so forth. It also has functions that are things it can do. We can set its fur color. Later, we're going to add like a bark and some things like that, right? Also, we with our set age, we took the time to make it to where we can protect the type of data that gets put in to make sure it's the right type of data. We're going to build that up more later. And then we have all these getters here that just return the values. All right, so let's get this code out of here so it's not in our face and in the way. We'll make a new file here. And so we'll just go, we'll make another folder called classes. So now I have this doggy file, and all we need is the class information. We'll get rid of all of this stuff here. That's going to be in our index. So here is our doggies class, our dog class, and then over here we can delete it from the actual index file. We don't need it anymore because we're just going to include it, right? So we're going to say include and classes doggies dot dot php. Okay. So now this is all running exactly the same, but now we've got it in a separate file. And let's refresh it just to make sure we didn't break anything and it looks good. Okay. But now we can manipulate the class a little better. Now it's all here in one separate file. Okay. And we can put all of our classes in here if we want. Right. We don't have to put just dog, the dog class. We can put whatever we want in there. Now, for those who have the Java background, right? What's wrong with lines 12 through 16 and lines 22 through 26? What's the deal there? Well, we, you can technically do what we're doing. And, and even in Java, you will do this, right? You'll set the age somewhere in your code. But typically, when you build the dog, you do it all at once, right? Yes, a constructor. Very good. So in Java and also in PHP, and we're about to set that up, what you can do is when you create a dog, just pass in everything right here. Put the age, put the, you know, age and, and sex and dot, 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 all the way. Put that right there. And then inside of the dog class, you take all that data and you build the dog. So you don't need lines 12 through 16. Okay. So let's just do that. We'll just go age is four, sex is male, and weight is 20, and color is white and name is spirit. Now notice we also have a few other things that we're not using. We're not using number of legs. We're not using is a good dog. We're not using weight. We can choose to put those in or not, right? Just for the sake of time and not having to build a whole bunch more, more things, we're, we're going to just ignore those. So we can just ignore that, that, and I think that, and they also height is being ignored. Now I can leave them as, as variables there and not comment them out. It won't matter whether they're there or not, other than, well, we, we need to keep name there, other than we do have weight, like we're using these variables inside of our class, right? So I'm not gonna comment them out, but I just wanted to point out that we're not gonna bother doing anything with them, okay? All right, so this should give us everything we want. So now I need to build something in the dog class that lets me do this, right? I mean, my dog, where do those parameters go? When I when I call the dog, where, where are they gonna go? We have to build a constructor, okay? And so if you're from Java, you would have a, a function that's actually called dog. It would match your class name. In our world, we don't do that. 
It's double underscore construct. That is the name of the constructor function, double underscore construct. And that will take in whatever parameters you tell it. And so if, let's remember the order here. We want age, sex, weight, color, name. So age, sex, weight, color, name. Okay, call those variables whatever you want. I'm just using letters that make some sense. Now, here's what happens. On line 11, when I say, hey, make a new dog, and its variable name is spirit, pass in the parameter four, male, 20, white, spirit, and hand those off to ASWCN. And now, inside of this function here, do something with them. Right, we essentially are wanting to do, you know, this name equals N and so forth, right? Except what's wrong with doing that? Other than my missing thing there. Why is that a bad idea? Maybe this will be a hint. Why is that a bad idea? Yeah, that if we do this, we just, what was the point of having this whole mess down here, right? This is meant to protect that. So we actually want to call our own functions too. We don't want to just do it this way. Right, and we don't want to have to. I mean, if we did, if we did it this way, we'd have to put all this logic up here. Well, we already have a function that does all that for us. So what we want to do is set age a, right? Now it's calling the set age function of whichever object we're dealing with, and now we'll do the exact same thing for the rest of those variables, right? And so it's set sex and Set weight. So there you go. Now this does all the work for us. And lines 12 through 16 are no longer necessary to create the dog. Right? So I'm going to comment out this one yet because it's not going to work properly now that I've done that. We'll get back to that one in a minute. But right now, look how clean this has become, right? just two lines. I have this and then I have this echo thing, which we're also going to clean up in a minute. Okay. But when I refresh it, it, oh, numbers missing. what did we do? Oh, I didn't save doggies. That's what, there we go. Okay. So now when I refresh it, everything's working just the way it did, but we have a much cleaner way to build a dog here, right? On line 11, we built the dog super easily. Okay. So let's come back down here and we'll add in here for this dog. Six, female, 25, marble, and name. And then we'll uncomment out this, get rid of all of that. And now again, everything's back to normal, but a much, much more efficient and effective way to manipulate the dog objects, right? And we have all this here that's doing all the work for us, okay? All right, so let's clean this up a little bit more. Let's take this whole mess here and do something with it. Okay. You shouldn't have to do this, right? And in fact, in Java, if you wanted to print out the dog, you would, you wanted to echo out spirit. What, what would you do to do that in Java? Yeah, the two string method. Very good. Yeah. So, you can do whatever you want. So for example, we can just take this, we're, we're gonna look at the two string in just a second, but let's take this out of here. Somewhere in our function here, or our class, we'll go public, you know, get dog or something like that, right? And then we could just return this, right? Easy enough, except we can't say spirit, we have to say this, right? So we just replace the spirit with this is, and now we have this nice little function, get dog, that just returns all of this. And now over here, if I say echo spirit dot get dog, right, it's getting all of the properties, all of the everything's about the dog. We'll do the same thing down here. Like that. And now we get an error, of course, on line 13 in doggies. Public, oh, I did it again, man. I always forget that function. It's because the variables don't require it. That's why. Jeez. There we go. Oh, uncaught call the get dog. Nice. A fatal error. 
um, function get dog. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> Look at line 13, it's 20. What's wrong with them? No. This is not Java, folks. The Dart operator. <laughs> the Dart operator. Holy cow. That's a common mistake I do. There we go. So the whole point, without the stupid errors there, is everything is working much more efficiently, much better. And we can even get a little bit more efficient by doing something like this, where we can just simply say, I don't know, we'll create a dogs array. And it's equal to a new dog. And this is just add it to the dogs array. And then we can do a for each loop here. And we'll do dogs as dog. And we'll just echo out dog. And now we have a nice little array with some dogs in it. And then we loop through the dogs array and we spit out all the dogs, right? So let's make sure that works and it still does. But now here, now that we have that, we can actually just add some more dogs, right? I can say this dog is seven and email and whatever that is, pounds, and it's a green dog and its name is blue. And this, <laughs> this one's 16 and it's male and it's 275 pounds and it's orange <laughs> and its name is tiny. All right, so now all I gotta do is refresh and poof, all those dogs just get added to my array, right? Really cool, okay? All right, what questions do we have about this basic idea here? How do we feel about a class, a template? We got the functions that are methods if you're used to the Java terminology. We have the variables, which are the properties, so forth, okay? And then we just made an array here. Now let me show you another syntax for making an array. We've looked at this before. But we can, if we wanted to, instead of doing it explicitly, putting the brackets there each time, we could say array, or sorry, dogs equals an array. And it's an array of objects, right? So this is the first element in the, in the array, is this one. And the second element will be this new dog. Put a comma there. Next element will be that new dog. And then last element will be this new dog. And now there's your array with four dogs in it or whatever, right? Four objects. So you have an object number one, object number two, and so forth. Now I'm showing you this because this is the more common way you'll see it in the industry. And in fact, what you'll most likely see is something like this, where they will separate out the parentheses, almost like you're looking at curly braces, right? So you can see here, it's clear that this dog's is an array and it's in the parentheses here you have the first element in the array the second and so forth you'll see that common of course most of the time in industry people do this stupid curly brace and, and parentheses notation where they have the first one on that line that drives me crazy i hate that but you'll get you get the idea you'll see something like this okay also i told you at the beginning of class today i'm not a fan of objects I'm not a fan of object-oriented programming and there are I've yet to find a project that couldn't be done in procedural that people insist must be done object oriented can be done other ways, okay? That aside, object oriented is the number one way that is programmed in the world today. Java is at the top, one of the top five languages you have to know and it's you have no choice but to be object oriented when you're using Java. So. That's a trend, a fad, a paradigm, or whatever you want to call it, that the world uses. And like it or not, PHP moved to the ability to do so. It's not required to use object-oriented programming in PHP, but you can, and you will see it. If you become a PHP programmer professionally, you will see it. You look at other people's code, it'll be there. Your boss may tell you, hey, we're, we need to, you to just make this class, make the dog class, and that's what you have to do. Too bad. I know you hate it, but you gotta do it, right? So that's why I'm showing this to you, so you get a feel for it. There's so much more about objects that we didn't, we're not going to get to today. We will, next time we meet, we'll get to it. We're probably going to spend three days on object-oriented programming. The other thing there is that there are tons and tons of built-in 
objects that are part of the language that you can use. One of them is the PDO object, which is a way to connect to a database using object-oriented programming rather than procedural programming. We're going to take a look at that possibly in the future because you will run into that in the real world. Okay. Okay. So a minute ago we mentioned this idea of the two-string method. That's what it's called in Java, and in Java and in most languages, if you try to print the object itself, so if I just said echo the dog right here, just the dog, like just the object, the whole object, in Java it prints out a memory address, right? In PHP, it gives you this. Can't convert dog to a string, because dog isn't a string, it's an object, right? And so that's why we made a function called get dog. Well, it'd be nice if I could just say print the dog, instead of saying print the dog, dart, get dog, right? You can do that, the two string method, which think about it, take the object, turn it into a string. What's this say here? Dog could not be converted to a string. So let's make a function that turns it into a string. Well, that's what we did. Get dog turns it into a string. It doesn't turn it into a string, it just returns a string based on the properties of the dog. Well, essentially all that's happening here is if we call this double underscore to string, that will become the default method that will run if you just try to print the dog. You don't have to call it explicitly, it just becomes a default method. So now when we say here, when we say here on line 19, print the dog, echo the dog, it will go to the default function, which is the two-string function. So now when I refresh it, everything's back to normal. So now we have this nice little bit of extra clean thing, and when we later learn about inheritance, you'll see why that's very valuable to have that instead of calling it something specific like get dog, okay? Questions about that idea? We good? Right? We don't have to put just dog, the dog class. We can put whatever we want in there. We, we will not put the cat class in there because we will not be making a cat class because cats are evil. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. If we did have a cat, you're right about that. If we did have a cat class, is evil would always be true. Yes. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. I just the word cat came out of your mouth and I had to stop it. <laughs>